You know, men, we want a job done right. What do we need? More power! Darn right, more power. What's up, guys? I'm Evan. This is Origin Painting, and today we're going to be painting up some beautiful black armored custodes from the Shadow Throne box. Additionally, I'm going to show you how to save a ton of time building up your Terminators. In order to figure out how I was going to paint these guys, I grabbed my first bounding board and looked for a suitable scheme. I settled on an Iron Hands inspired theme because who doesn't love that shiny black silver look? I'll put a full paint list up at the end, so stay tuned for that. Now let's go paint. To kick off the painting, I'll be using Stylo Res Black Primer. Then I'll slowly add white ink to it to create a Zenithal Prime. This helps me see the detail and where the shadows would naturally fall. Once that's done, I'm going to start building out my dark silvers. I'll start with black and silver, tracing that zenithal highlight, and add silver as my angles get higher and higher. Now this is where the magic happens. I'm using heavily thinned down ink to darken the entire armor surface. I'm also using this to create more contrast, pushing more color into the lower areas, those with the shadows, and leaving those upper surfaces really bright. This is what gives us that metallic black look from the Iron Hands reference. Now that the silver's down, it's onto the cloaks. I decided to use red as it's going to be my main accent color. I want these to stand out strong. And this is where that build tip comes in that I talked about. This step right here. Don't do it. Just leave it off, glue it on later. I would go ahead and sticky tack these on each side just to get them to match the rest of the armor look. Then take them off and glue them into place once the cloaks are on. As you can see here, in addition to the cloaks, I'm also going to be using the red on the weapons and the plumes. In order to really pop these reds, I'm going to be blending in some yellow. That's going to get it up to a nice bright orange red and really just give it a nice fiery look, something that's alive and bright and powerful. Out of everything on these models, these cloaks probably took the most time. If not the cloaks, then definitely the red in general, but man is spending the time paying off. After blending in those highlights, I went ahead and added some black to get a nice dark recess color. It definitely helps to up that contrast. Now onto the browns. I'm going to be using these two paints on the fur, ropes, and purity seals. In some places, I'll paint them just with snake bite leather to get a dark color, and in other places, I'll put on the ivory as a nice base and then come back in with snake bite leather to get a little bit brighter color. One of the big advantages to using these colors is the ability to create contrast. Again, the same as with those cloaks, we want contrast. Creating the bright white pop against the dark red, especially in the recesses, gives a ton of visual interest. Maximizing this kind of contrast is what draws someone into your model, rather than giving it a once over and then moving on. Next up, while I have this ivory out, I'm going to do some damage. Not that kind of damage, it's, it's okay. I'm going to keep it pretty basic, I'm just going to use single slashes to show wear and tear. I'm also going to be limiting it to the blade champion in order to make him stand out more.
new day, new palette. And I'm gonna go back to silver because honestly, these guys are 80% silver shade in one way or another. What I'm focused on now is using pure silver to pick out not only the upper surfaces, but also the things that I want to draw someone's eye to. One of the things in mini painting we can use to our advantage is the ability to channel someone's interest. We can do it by placing high contrast items where we want someone's eye to go. In this case, I'm brightening up the shoulder pauldrons and the helmet to bring attention to the face. And here's a side by side to show you how effective adding that silver back in really is. And here you can see the difference in the legs and the torso. The legs have been painted, the torso is not. Where did your eye go? Was it up here or down here? Thought so. Going back over to our Sisters of Silence, it's time to paint the only exposed skin in this entire set. For this, I'm laying down a skin tone and then putting down a thin Fire Slayer flesh. Nothing crazy, especially as it's so little skin. It's time to figure out what color to use for my blades, eyes, and gems. I think the best answer for this is purple. It's a commanding color, associated with royalty, and just looks great when made to look like it's glowing. I'll be treating all these circles as traditional gems, dots of light at the top and a wider diffused color at the bottom. This will be done by adding in pink and then adding white to create that color pop. Once I had all the colors in, I decided that it wasn't as contrasting as I'd like. This armor was just missing something. In order to fix that, I decided to do some thinned down carbon black ink and put it in specific areas. This is far from an all over wash and is targeted mostly around the brightest silvers. From there, I'm moving on to the bases, you know the ones I took an orbital sander to. Using that sander, smoothed out the surface so I could get a nice marble finish on top. This is super easy and I've got a video for it here. The extremely simple version of this is you prime it black, you lay a baby wipe across it, spray white through it, and then gloss coat it. A good thing to keep your eye out for is that sometimes these fibers don't always stay on the baby wipes. They might try and hitchhike on your base. Last thing to really make these interesting was to cut a line into the base to make it look like an actual tile. This is a really nice subtractive method and it doesn't require much other than a saw, an X-Acto knife, or a scribing tool. From there I went to work on the power weapons. I masked these off so as not to get too much spillover. I actually do want a little bit. It gives me kind of a cheap OSL look. All I'm doing here is working up from the purple all the way to white. You could wet blend or glaze this in if you don't have an airbrush. It's not something that's airbrush specific and lots of guys brush blend these blades and they look beautiful. In the end, it'll give you a very interesting and very visually appealing weapon.
last thing to do is put a matte varnish down over these guys. This is going to do several things. First, and most importantly, it's going to protect them. Secondly, it'll unify the blends a touch, making them just a little bit smoother. Finally, it's going to move the silver from a TMM, that true metallic metal silver, in a more of an NMM space, the non-metallic. The varnish does cut down some of the shine from those metallics, and it takes them away from that pure silver look into a little bit more of a gray scale. If you wanted to, you could go back and hit certain areas after you've done this varnish with that pure silver again to really get some brightness and some luster to it. In order to mount these on the bases, I'm going to be drilling and pinning them. I already have the paper clips inserted in the models for the painting, so it just makes sense to use them to create a really strong bond with the base. And that's it. One completely painted Shadow Throne Custode set. Lots of bikes incoming. Like, lots of bikes. Now, go grab your plastic, your paints, and go have some fun. See ya.